Inculinati walks and talks like a game that's right up my alley. There's deliberately paced strategic combat, excellent presentation that looks right out of the margins of a medieval manuscript, and there's entire classes built around farts. So why am I so bored is the question I keep coming back to. And I think it's difficult to answer because there's no singular Achilles heel that was hampering my experience. It's really the lack of the rest of Achilles' body that's the issue. Inculinati is a roguelike in which you play as an Inculinati, a meta-deity-like figure who can spawn soldiers onto the battlefield and engage in 2D turn-based combat for them, limited only by their imagination and their supply of ink. It's a premise that actually does have meaningful impact on how games play out. Preservation of your units isn't exactly a priority because they're expendable, with their death having them melt into a puddle of ink that can be reused to create more units. So you can be aggressive with your troops in service of defense elsewhere on the map. You will want to protect the little embodiment of your Inculinati that acts as the king in your fart-based chest. They themselves are a unit, and it's from them where all of your other units are spawned, on top of them having some minor combat abilities of their own, like being able to push people to the left or right on a pretty low cooldown. In practice, that's way more important than you might think, because if there's anything that truly defines Inculinati's combat, it's the hyper-focus it has on positioning and environmental hazards. Positioning is everything. Characters facing away from their opponents open themselves up to major backstab bonuses, Friendly fire ensures that your strong area attackers are as much a liability as they are an asset if you don't space your units accordingly. These are not concepts that exist at the periphery or are minor implications to be considered on the hardest difficulty. Your average arena in Inculinati is usually only around 20 tiles total that will be housing both your and your opponent's animal warriors. By the time tile space also starts getting consumed with environmental hazards and the medieval equivalent of explosive barrels, Things are going to start getting cramped and you're going to have to get uncomfortably close to danger. The levels are incubators for chaotic stuff to happen. Infections will spread, fires will burn, and ledges will ledge. You're always one bad position away from getting thrown off the map, reinforced by the fact that the capacity to shove is not a unit specific ability but instead something anyone in the cast can do. Your inevitable trip off the edge of the map is rewarded by thankfully not ending your run, but only losing a life. A concession Inculinati makes to the roguelike formula, presumably because of how instantly and unpredictably that death can come, until you've trained your eye to look for it. This is all profoundly strategic. On normal difficulty, it took me around 4-5 to five hours to finally get through my first successful run, and defeat death itself. With that first few hours of attempts demanding I rewire my brain to account for its unique take on positioning, as well as get a handle on some of the most important unit synergies. Not to mention getting the timing down on its little Paper Mario action commands. So what exactly is the problem? Like I mentioned, I don't think this game has vices as much as it just doesn't have enough virtues. It's a totally serviceable, well-made game, no doubt created by a team of folks who are great at their crafts. I just think the game is in dire need of an X Factor. I'm starting to suspect that its art style was supposed to be that X Factor, and while it's no doubt striking, it's not show-stoppingly original like it might have been about a year ago. Between games like Pentiment and Potion Craft, this very specific medieval art style has ironically had a little renaissance in the past few months. Now it is worth calling out that Inculinati is in early access, having just released in that program less than a week ago. Though to be fair, I don't think the emptiness I'm feeling is necessarily a lack of content, but more so structural observations about the game itself. Inculinati never gave me that one more run sensation that's the driving force behind all of my favorite roguelikes, both because of how long and exhaustingly taxing each run can be, but also because of how little variation I felt from run to run. Sure, there are different power-ups you get and events you run into on your three-lane roguelike journey, but most of these traits are localized to the Inculinati themselves, and not to other units in your party. New active abilities and relics, even if they very generously change your Inculinati's playstyle by 100%, are still contending with the fact that they're married to but one of your half dozen or so units. Hell, half the time they aren't even in the battles because there's an entire encounter type dedicated to fighting without your Inculinati, making battle to battle and run to run feeling almost indistinguishable. 
The game tries to combat some of that sameness with its boredom system, which gives you penalties from summoning the same units over and over with the hilariously awesome in-universe justification that your Inculinati gets bored doing the same stuff time after time. But the problem is that so do I, and that boredom system was one that I barely felt because of how much redundancy there is in the cast. Sure, I can't summon my dog swordsman without consuming extra ink, but I can just summon a rabbit or fox swordsman instead, and in most cases the subtleties that differentiate them won't matter. Inculinati is not a game devoid of cool ideas. Its marginalia aesthetic gleefully indulges in the wackiness its source material frequently had, and its unique ultra-focus on positioning and movement specifically gives the strategy its own distinct feel. But between minimal run variation, an extremely basic roguelike three-lane framework, and slow, plodding gameplay, it's hard to recommend. This game is on Game Pass, and I'd say that's the perfect service for it. If you've already indirectly paid for it, then the few hours of admiration you'll get out of its art style might be worth the installation. But if you're like me, they won't snowball into many hours beyond that. It's by no means a bad game, it's just that when I envision a list of all the fun and worthwhile strategy games I've played in my life, Inculinati is somewhere on the margins.